In today's video, we're continuing our adventure with Indiana Jones as we dive into the depths of the Well of Souls in the second episode of my building series. I've got a lot of progress done since the last time you saw the build, including improving the wall structure, starting the platform in the middle of the chamber, implementing the first lights, and much much more. So it's time to dust off your fedora once again, and let's get started right now. Hello! How y'all doing guys? Welcome back to Kubrick. Last time we kicked off our jaw-dropping journey into the Well of Souls and today we're about to crack it up a notch. I mean, who needs a whip when you got your bricks and separators, am I right? So let's put them in good use, starting with we're making the walls. We more or less established their shape, but as you might remember, I wasn't really happy of how they are mounted because of how fragile they were and how much stress was put on the parts. So what I did here is started the right side wall with the same pattern as previously, but this time reinforced with Technic lift arms. By using these movable joints, I was able to get a nearly perfect angle and besides just look how sturdy it is. When I'll add these parts on both sides and reinforce the whole structure with another scaffolding like this, it should be perfect. And I don't even have to worry about the angles too much, because if I press it against the tall inverted slopes, I'll get the same angle as the rest of the walls, and that is just awesome. So putting this wall aside, let's now modify the previous made one on the left, and connect them together to see if my assumptions were correct. And what do you know, it's exactly as I want it. Walls are held together by Technic lift arms, pressed against the slopes from both sides, and even with just one of those beams, it's already sturdy, so let's move on. But before we move on with that structure, let's make use of the stickers I got last time, because I want to test out how can I make the back wall, since like I told you in the first episode, I'm going to make the back wall decorated with all sorts of hieroglyphs. As for the big stickers that are on the 6x6 panels in the set, I cut them in pieces as I didn't want to use these huge parts, so let's see how will they work on some 2x4 tiles, for example. Okay, not bad, but come to think of it, the tiles won't be a good choice for the wall, because I would have to make two intricate connections in order to make it even with bricks, so I think I'll have to remove them and place them on some tall bricks or panels. But actually, let's not worry about that at this moment and make the wall from what I have. Uh, wait. Okay, I think I got carried away with that because I will need a lot more of the hieroglyphs on the wall to look good, so I'll get back to it when I order some more stickers or printed bricks. But at least I can now lean the slanted walls on the back to make sure they're at the right place. I've added the front corner here as well, and it looks like I will have to extend the techniques in the middle by one or two studs in order to have the angles match correctly, so let's go ahead and do that now. Ok, now it is as it should be. I widened the connection, added the second beam in the back to make the whole contraption more stable, and added a couple more inverted slopes to make sure everything stays in place. As for what's going on here, let's get rid of this wall for now since I need to fix that either way to fit the new scaffolding. And yeah, I need to remake this connection as well because I don't trust that rubber band holding the whole wall together firmly. My feeling exactly. So this is what I came up with. A couple of mixo joints connected to the lift arm with a ball pin and to the wall using a regular plate gets the job done. So we can forget about the rubber band now. And while doing that, I've also started reinforcing the whole technique structure with bricks, because here I need to make both sides cover with plates and tiles. And how I see it is some of the bricks are facing up, some down. And that will allow me to build on both sides without worrying about the negative studs on the ceiling, because that isn't a pretty thing to look at and I want the ceiling to be matching the walls and the floor as much as possible. But that is actually something to worry about later, so let's carry on with the walls. So I made the corner piece of the wall on the right side to match the other one and started building the left outer wall. 
Before I cover it entirely, I wanted to show you guys how I figured out the mounting of this wall and I made it using a Technic brick and made a small contraption that will allow me to connect to the lift arm holding the inner wall. Nothing fancy here, just an axle reinforced with some Technic pieces so it can hold it in place. As for now, it's still not fixed in place, but when I add another holder like this higher, the whole wall section will be one big connected part, so it should be sturdy enough. And thanks to the inverted slopes inside, it doesn't even have to be connected. It should stay here firmly when held by both sides, so let's move on with some more brick building. And this way we have the entire outer wall, like I said, held with another Technic axle from the inside, which I cannot show you since I've already covered it, so... Trust me. I also added the first plates for the roof part since there is a half plate difference between the reverse Technic bricks and this way I'll be able to cover it evenly with 10 plates later on. Okay, but now I am almost entirely out of several types of 10 bricks so in order to make the wall on the other side I will have to make another order so probably we'll finish it in the next episode. But this is way too little progress for this update, so we have to keep on building. And you know what that means. You know. Yup, let's start covering this ugly grey hole in the middle. So looking at this frame from the movie, there is supposed to be a set of stairs leading to the platform, so that's exactly what I'll do. Nothing crazy here, just a couple of stairs made with some tiles, with a bit of detailing in the style of the floor pattern, and this should be enough. But here is where it gets interesting. I made a small cover which I can quickly remove, and underneath we have a switch for the lights lighting up the torches that will keep the snakes at bay. Unfortunately, I have only 5 LED lights for the torches, so I'll have to spread them evenly on the platform, keeping in mind that there will be two statues here, so I have to leave some space for them. And now having that planned out, I can start covering the whole thing with plates, leaving gaps for the cables to go through, and also extending the cord to the back, because later on I will be connecting light panels under the arc, but that also is something to worry about later on. But come to think of it, I should mark the light switch a bit more, so I did a thing. Brace yourself, because this is not gonna be an easy thing to look at for some folks. FBI, open up! Yeah, I know some may consider this a crime, but in my opinion, it was totally worth it. It's just a perfect tail for the half of the snake that we have from the set and there are no horn pieces or anything similar in dark green color to match here so I'm guessing I'll do the rest of the snake heads like this as well. And now this switch is just perfectly hidden with an easy access to it so it's a win-win situation. Okay so with that taken care of let's move on with the platform. I covered the rest of it with plates and placed the remaining torches, so now let's make the second set of stairs leading up to the Ark of the Covenant. Again, nothing special here as the stairs are almost identical to the ones in the front, with one difference being the medium nougat plates, as in the movie there is a color strip near the stairs. Alrighty then, now that we have this done and no way to move forward without the new pieces, let's take a look at what these new pieces are because I just received a package from Brickling. And what do you know, it's mostly tan pieces. So we have one printed adventurer's brick, some 1x4s, one 1x14 brick with a railing and a bunch of masonry bricks. Next we got some brackets that I plan to use for covering the techniques around the ceiling, some tiles mostly 2x3 and 2x4, and in the last bag we have some jumpers, cheese slopes, few panels for stickers, another gold owl for the arch above the arc, and of course... Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? Oh, and of course we cannot forget about what's in the envelope. Yep, three more sheets of stickers to cover the back wall with hieroglyphs. 
Now let's make use of these parts, spread the snakes around, cover the front wall with the tiles I got, replace the corner tiles with the proper color and finally finish the platform by covering it with tiles. So here I'ma stop talking for a bit so you can enjoy the time lapse of me working with Indy to accompany me and I'll be back after it's done. So the floor is nicely tiled up and looking great and I even made a part of the back wall of screen just to have some nice background for the cover picture and I think we can end this episode's progress here. I gotta say I'm really happy of how much progress was I able to make because the mock is starting to look awesome and it's actually coming along so nicely that I think that we should be done with it in two more episodes. If of course the statues there on the horizon won't give me a stroke or something. So now, as usual, it's time for you to let me know what do you think about the progress in the comment section below, smash that like button and of course subscribe if you are new to the channel. I will see you all in the next video here on Kubrick and until then, as always, make sure you keep it bricking. <laughs>